So I just created a pull request and this was the result. A GitHub Actions workflow created a Neon branch for me, applied the database migrations that are in code, and then used this newly created Neon branch as part of the preview deployment. So now we have the preview deployment live with the different data and schema. Neon enables you to create branches just like you do with code. Every Neon branch has both the schema and data so that you can use it in your workflow. This is super useful in the context of preview environments because you can create a Neon branch for every preview so that your previews are truly production-like. Here's an example. So right now I'm in my project. It is a simple Node.js API that's run in TypeScript and deployed to fly.io. So if I go to fly, and I visit the deployed version, we just get some JSON. And here we just see it's an object and we have a key of users and an array. And this data is actually coming from a Neon database. So if we go back to the code and we go to the source directory, index.ts, you'll see that it's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. So I'm using Fastify as my server and I'm defining a single API endpoint that accepts get requests at the index route. And all I'm doing is I'm querying the database and then I'm returning an object that has, you know, a key of users and then an array of users. Now this is actually using Drizzle ORM. So let's talk about Drizzle. Drizzle is a TypeScript ORM that has a bunch of cool features. For example, it offers a SQL-like API for querying your database. So if you already know SQL, well, you'll feel very comfortable working with Drizzle. So here we can see it's db.select.from users. So this is the equivalent of doing select start from users, which is very cool. Of course, we have the added benefit of seeing the return types. So here we can see that this function here returns an array of objects, which is true. Now to define the database schema with Drizzle, you do it with TypeScript. So here I have in my source directory, a directory called db, and inside it, we have a schema.ts file. And this is how I'm defining my database schema. So I just have a single table called user, and we have the following columns. Now, after defining the schema with TypeScript, there's another step which is needed, which is to generate the necessary database migrations. And this is possible with DrizzleKit. So I have in my package.json a script that runs DrizzleKit and it's called dbgenerate and this just calls DrizzleKit and generates a Postgres schema and I'm just specifying the location of my database schema that's run in TypeScript. And once I generate the migrations, they will be placed in the Drizzle directory that's in the root of my project. So you can already see that I have an initial migration which creates the users table that I already have in my database. And after generating the migrations, well, the last step is actually applying them you know, to the database. And to do that, I have a custom script that uses the migrate function that's provided by Drizzle. And all this does is once I call this script, we, we run the migrate function, which, you know, where we first pass in like the database connection, and then we specify the location of the migrations folder. And that's pretty much it. If things go well, we'll see migration successful. Otherwise, yeah, we'll, we'll get an error. So that's pretty much it. So let's actually see what a typical flow would look like where I want to introduce a new change, you know, by creating a pull request. So let me just close all of this and let's first create a new Git branch. So I'll do git checkout and let's call it feet slash add, I don't know, column to the user table. Now what I'll do is go to my database schema and let's say I want to add a new column. Let's call it is subscribed. By the way, you should subscribe to the Neon YouTube channel. And let's say it's going to be a Boolean and we can import this Boolean from drizzle or M slash BG core and we can have a default value of, you guessed it, true. So now that I added this new column, I can just now run the db generate command. And to do that, I'll just do pnpm 
db generate. And you'll see that we still have one table, but now we have eight columns and we have a new generated file. So now if I go to drizzle and you'll see that this alters the user table and adds a new column called is subscribed and it's a Boolean and by default it will be true. So now the last step is actually applying this migration and this can be done by running the db migrate command and typically you will have a local Postgres instance running or you can actually use a neon branch instead of that and it would just work. So for example, here if I go to the neon console and I go to, you know, like my project and then branches, you'll see that I have a development branch that I'm using locally to code against basically. And this branch of course has schema and data, which is very convenient. So yeah, so that's pretty much the workflow. Now that we have our migrations and they're generated and we're happy with the changes, well, what we can do is just open a pull request and this pull request will actually set up a preview app. So let's see what that looks like. So I just created a pull request and this was the result. A GitHub Actions workflow created a neon branch for me, applied the database migrations that are in code, and then used this newly created neon branch as part of the preview deployment. So now we have the preview deployment live with the different data and schema. So we can actually compare this against the production version. And you will notice that now the new preview branch has the is subscribed field and you know because all users now have is subscribed true which is again your reminder to subscribe to the channel but yeah so this is how you can achieve it so now let's actually dive into how this all works with github actions so in the root of my project i have a dog github directory which contains all of my ci workflows and when a pull request is opened the deploy preview workflow gets triggered so here we first you know this runs on pull request and we're first setting some secrets so we have the neon database username this is the username that will be used for the branch we'll create as part of this workflow we have the github token so for this token it's needed for private repos so that you know the github action can comment on the pull request and then we're getting we're setting you know a neon api key and the project id so that we can actually create the branch and then we are importing from secrets the fly api token so that we can actually do a preview deployment now this workflow just has a single job called deploy preview and it has a bunch of setup steps that you know just installs node pmpm and all the dependencies but we actually have an important step, which is this one. So getting the branch name. So this step gets the git branch name for us, and we're going to use it as the name or as part of the name of the neon branch we'll create. This will make it easy for you to identify, you know, because when you have many branches, you'll be able to easily find which neon branch belongs to which preview environment and which pull request. So when we create a Neon branch, we're using the create branch action, which is provided by Neon. And this action takes as arguments like the project ID, which is imported from the environment variables, the branch name, which follows the naming convention of preview slash PR, and then the PR number, and then the name of the Git branch. So in my case, the Neon branch for this preview will be called you know, like preview PR and then the PR number and then dash feed slash add column user. And yeah, once we create the branch, we then run the migrations. So for the, you know, current branch, this is the name of the Git branch and we're getting it from the previous step. And for the migrations, well, we're doing kind of the same thing, but we're getting the connection string from the create branch step. And then we just run the database migrations. So what this will do is drizzle kit will check the drizzle folder for you know to see if there are any pending migrations that haven't been applied if there are migrations they will be applied and if there are any errors you'll know and this is how you know the neon branch that we just created will have all of our latest you know like schema changes then we create a preview deployment using you know superfly this comes from um, like fly.io, they just have a fly PR review apps action that you can just use. And the cool thing is this action takes care of 
the creating of the creation of the preview environment as well as deleting it later and we'll we'll look at that in a bit and then we just pass you know as a secret the database url which we just got from creating uh, the branch and then we just comment on the pull request and you'll need to uncomment the github token when you you know like copy this example so that you know it just works and then we're just setting the message when we comment on the pull request saying the preview url is this and we're getting the url from the deploy step and we're getting the url of the branch from the uh, create branch step and that's it this is how we're creating a preview deployment for every pull request as well as a neon branch like a neon preview branch that has you know like all of our schema changes applied to it now once we actually merge you know like the open pull request this triggers two workflows so the first one is deploy production and what this does is whenever we merge and push to the main branch on github well this will deploy to production so we're just setting up dependencies and then we're running the migrations because you know, when you think about it, the pull request will have the schema changes, but production doesn't have them yet. So once you merge, we're going to reapply those migrations to production. Well, you know, they should work because we just tested them in preview, and then we'll do a production deployment. And this will happen, but at the same time, we're going to delete the preview app because it's not needed anymore. And to do that, we have a cleanup preview workflow which runs whenever a pull request is closed. So even if you know you open a pull request and then you don't merge it and you just close it, well, the preview app will be deleted. So in our case here, we just have a single job that just deletes the fly app and deletes the neon branch. Now, the way this works for the fly app is in turn, like in the action itself, it detects which pull request event is triggered. So if it's open, it will deploy. If it's closed, it will delete, which is pretty convenient. And yeah, we're then deleting the neon branch so that we don't want, you know, like neon branches to just accumulate. So we're cleaning and we're cleaning them up as part of the merge process. So now when I merge the pull request, what should happen is we will can go to the actions tab and we will see that we now have the two workflows running. And if we go to the neon console, we should see this preview branch just get deleted and disappear. So let's actually check on the status. This is the cleanup preview deployment. And yeah, right now we're deleting the neon branch and we don't have the branch anymore. And if we go to fly and we just go to all the apps, we don't have any other deployments other than production. And that's it. This is how you can create a neon branch for every preview so that your previews are truly production-like. Now you can change GitHub Actions with your CI/CD tool of choice or swap out Fly.io with another deployment provider and you'll be able to achieve the same result. So yeah, if you have any questions about Neon, about this flow, feel free to reach out down below or to ask us in the Neon Discord community. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.